Okay, I want to start with a story, and the story is when I first joined Miller Hyman, Steve Hyman used to say, and we were selling sales training, he used to say, I can be used as a resource, I want to be used as a resource, I can be very effective on sales calls, but I don't want you to waste me, okay? So if you're calling on somebody in training or in HR or whatever, uh, that's not the time to bring me in. But when you get an appointment with you know, a VP of sales or the president of a company or an EVP, you know, who has broad responsibility, including uh, sales and revenue, that's the time to bring me in. And it took me about six months to figure out, <laughs> Steve, if I get that appointment, I don't need you. <laughs> Getting the appointment is the hard part, okay? <laughs> How about you get the appointment and bring me in and I'll just sit there and soak up as much learning as I can <laughs> And, you know, try and grow into my shoes over, you know, the next six months or so. Uh, I see that happening over and over and over again. And it's become a, my mission. Okay, this is the thing that if asked, I really want to do something about in this next chapter of my career and of sales mastery. Okay, we're doing our research. A lot of things are as they have been for a long time, I think it's time to flip the script on B2B sales. And I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that. We have a video that you can see. Uh, there'll be a couple of graphics I'll put up uh, here when we uh, send this over to you that talk about the easiest to the hardest sale. The easiest sale is an existing product, an existing customer, an existing rep in an existing territory. Okay. The second easiest is an existing product, an existing customer, an existing rep in a new territory. So you take that individual, still calling on the same accounts more or less, but put them in a new territory. So maybe they're calling on different folks, but the same accounts, same product, same history. Um, the next easiest is a new product, existing customer, existing rep, existing territory, and so on. The point of this is you are down to sixth place before you get two news. Okay, now, what's the hardest sale? The hardest sale is new everything. New customer, new product, new rep, new territory. Welcome to the world of BDRs and SDRs. And I'm like, what? And so it just seems like a very uncaring and I would say unthinking way of bringing people into the profession. And at the same time that the newbies are being ground up like sawdust, I mean the turnover rate for SDRs and BDRs is like 80% in the first nine months. Uh, at the same time you've got veterans who are living off their book of business and every time I've gone through this with uh, customers, you know, uh, clients, whiteboarding this thing and I'll show them and they go, oh my God, that's us. And it's like, okay, <laughs> should we change that in some way? Do you want to address that? And the fact of the matter is I've never seen anybody do it. I've never seen them change. I even had uh, a, a friend who was CEO of a software company watch our video on Easiest Artist Sale and he called me up after and he said, do you know anyone who's changed their operations based on this? And I said, no, but I know the CEO of a software company that could. He didn't. And so my mission is to do exactly this. The thing that I see happening is veterans living off their book of business and not doing the hard work of breaking new accounts. I won't say they never do it, but it's, the, I think, a lot of the heavy lifting, the getting the tough appointments and doing the grunt work and grinding it out is being left to the BDRs and SDRs, the newbies. And yeah, there are new tools and it's not like it was 20 years ago. You know, they, they do have insights on, uh, you know, who buying influence, who people are in these organizations, what some of the issues are, what's happening in those companies. I mean, there's a lot of information available, but that information in the hands of a 20 something is, is going to be applied and used to, I think, much less effect 
than in the hands of a 20-year veteran, a 40-something or even an early 50-something who can bring a lot more to the, to, the, to the conversation, bring more to the table. And that, to me, is what sales mastery is about. You know, getting better and better, lifelong learning, continuous improvement in the world of selling, in the profession of selling, and being able to do that hard work as well as have the extended conversations. I think because of ageism, a lot of sales veterans have been sort of pruned out of organizations. Um, now with many of the layoffs taking place. I think during the Great Resignation, you know, part of the part of and following, you know, the pandemic, uh, post-COVID world, I think a lot of folks just said, you know, that's it for me and quit. And, you know, now I see these guys, you know, like doing Sudoku to keep their brains active and playing pickleball. And I just think there's more available. I think getting back in the game, being on the field and exploiting a many, many of these new tools, which I think a lot of veterans, I, I don't want to say they've been coasting, but are they really exploiting the technology? Are they really leveraging their experience? Are they really growing their competence? Are they really setting the pace and pushing the envelope and exploring and expanding relationships? I think that that's available. and I think that's the really cool, rich, delicious stuff that's available. And that's what I want to do. I haven't been able to talk anybody else into it, so I'm doing it for Sales Mastery. Yeah, we're calling on folks who know us and people who participate in our surveys, but I'm also doing cold outreach and trying new technologies that I haven't done before. And, you know, live and learn. You, some of it will work and some of it won't. But it, to me, that's what we should be doing every day. Growing and improving and expanding our skill set and our profession. What do you think?